It's a blessing to welcome all of you to this third Sunday of our worship in the season of Lent. In the YouTube link below, you will find an order of worship and a link also for our online giving to Bishop's Dollar that is our Lenten collection. It is a blessing to have as our preacher this week, Samson Mamour, who is a second year seminarian at Virginia Theological Seminary, and to have Sharon Rambo, the organist and choir director at St. John's in Whitfield, Virginia. Our worship begins this morning with the penitential order on page 351 of the Book of Common Prayer. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. His mercy endures forever. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, 
strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. And I'll show with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you know that we have no power in ourselves to help ourselves. Keep us both outwardly in our bodies and inwardly in our souls, that we may be defended from all adversities which may happen to the body and from all evil thoughts which may assault and hurt the soul. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from Exodus. Then God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol, whether in the form of anything that is in heaven above, or that is on the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or worship them. For I am the Lord, your God, am a jealous God, punishing children for the iniquity of parents to the third and the fourth generation of those who reject me, but showing steadfast love to the thousandth generation of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord, your God, for the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work, you, your son, or your daughter, your male or female slave, your livestock, or the alien resident in your towns. For in six, for in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them, but rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and consecrated it. Honor your father and your mother, so that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, or male or female slave, or ox, or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. Here ends the reading. Let us now read together Psalm 19. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament shows his handiwork. One day tells its tale to another, and one night imparts knowledge to another. Although they have no words or language, and their voices are not heard, their sound has gone out into all lands, and their message to the ends of the world. In the deep has he set a pavilion for the sun. It comes forth like a bridegroom out of his chamber, It rejoices like a champion to run its course. It goes forth from the outermost edge of the heavens and runs about to the end of it again. Nothing is hidden from its burning heat. The law of the Lord is perfect and revives the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure and gives wisdom to the innocent. The statutes of the Lord are just and rejoice in the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear and gives light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean and endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, more than much fine gold. 
sweeter far than honey, than honey in the comb. By them also is your servant enlightened. And in keeping them there is great reward. Who can tell how often he offends? Cleanse me from my secret faults. Above all, keep your servant from presumptuous sins. Let them not get dominion over me. Then shall I be whole and sound and innocent of a great offense. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. A reading from 1 Corinthians. For the message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom, God decided through the foolishness of our proclamation to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs and Greeks desire wisdom. But we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those who are, are the called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. Here ends your reading. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. The Passover of the Jews was near, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple, he found people selling cattle, sheep, and doves, and the money changers seated at their tables. Making a whip of cords, he drove all of them out of the temple, both the sheep and the cattle. And he also poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. He told those who were selling the doves, Take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples remembered that it was written, Zeal for your house will consume me. The Jews then said to him, What sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. Then the Jews said, this temple has been under construction for 46 years, and you will raise it up in three days? But he was speaking of the temple of his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord our Christ. Let us pray. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. Our reading today reminds us of how challenging 
living the gospel can be and remind us why each year we need times like Lent season to allow us to reflect on how we are doing. Today's text is one of the most striking passages in the Gospels. When it was almost time for a Jewish Passover, Jesus went up to Jerusalem and appeared on the brink of violence. He drove the money changers from the temple, which was now turned into market. It features some of the most controversial but challenging actions of Jesus. In it, Jesus drove out the people who were selling animals, exchanging money, and overturned their table. Passover is a huge annual celebration in Jerusalem. Thousands of pilgrims from around the world come there for the festival. This pilgrimage season was the highlight journey for any observant believer in the land of Israel. Think of when you are a Muslim friend or a neighbor goes on the heat today. The Passover pilgrimage was similar. This Passover celebration lasts for eight days. People arrive in the holy city with the small things they could carry and the Roman imperial money in their pocket. Since they, can, since they came from a distant part of the country and world, it would be hard for them to bring their sacrificial elements along. During the celebration at Passover, it was paramount to sacrifice animals. Remember that there were many pilgrims, so bulls, lambs, and birds had to be slaughtered exponentially. So the animals have to be for the cell. This trade is essential because people coming from afar cannot bring their animal. Only unblemished animals are acceptable for sacrifice. Even a day trip from nearby Galilee will be challenging to keep animal perfect for a journey from a nearby surroundings. And it will be impossible for those coming from other distant places. Money changes are also required because travelers bring coins from many countries and the Midrash limit the use of a cash in shekel to be used for the temple tax. Many scholars say that Roman coins are unsuitable because they bore Caesar's image and inscription relating to his God. Those in charge of temple trade could also defend it by claiming that money from the concession was used to finance the temple expenses throughout the year. We can hear a similar argument in the church today. It is for God, so it should be fine. No doubt, Jesus knows that all of those things are critical for the Passover to occur. Then why would Jesus make a whip, turn the table, and drive people out of the temple? Just take a profound moment and think this happening right here in front of your church court area. Many Christians are accustomed to a holy things such that we intend to ignore the holiness of God. Let us imagine that what happened in Jerusalem temple happened in your church today. I believe beyond any reasonable doubt, the rector of the church cannot hesitate to close down the church because of the actions that defile the church. Similarly, 
Jesus had to shut down the Jerusalem temple. The temple closed that day and it threw everything into a mess. Jesus occupied the temple because the official lost the text and were perpetuating injustice. This behavior of Jesus today will be called insurrection against the temple leaders because Jesus saw the house of worship had become a marketplace. Temple in the Old Testament was a holy place set apart for worship, prayer, and God's presence. What Jesus did was symbolic. What he meant by driving people away from the temple when it was necessary to do so is that he needed them to make their priority right. The temple work must be the work that God has established. They should not allow the culture to dictate its agenda, leadership, mission, or norms. They should be ready to follow God, even when it means moving against the culture. Jesus warned people to stop making his father's house a marketplace. Therefore, God's purpose and plan are to be the first word in the house of worship. This act of Jesus in the temple reminds me when I was a little kid. Parents used to spank their children as part of parenting. I don't know if that can be some that can happen today. But that does not mean that they do not love their children. Sometimes when a parent disciplines their, ch their children, it is like they are forced to do so. But inwardly, they are remorseful because of the parent parental love that they have for their child. But when a disobedient child needs a discipline, then this is the form of love should take. We can do things wrong for a long time until we get used to them and think they are right. And we can even believe the wrong things for so long that we reject the truth because it is different and we haven't heard about it and it seems wrong. We must see the action of Jesus as an opportunity to put things right and prepare for what God has planned for us. The glory and the presence of God will not be found in the sloppy practice and protocols in which we find comfort. It is said they will be found in our obedience and turning away from doing wrong. The Apostle Paul taught us we are the temple of God. The reason he says this is because the death of Jesus Christ served us. Because of the redemption, the Holy Spirit dwelled in those who are redeemed. On this season of Lent, we have to take time for refinement and regeneration. Just as Jesus spent 40 days in the wilderness to prepare for his ministry in the world, so on these 40 days, we should be refocusing our time and action on God's mission for us. These 40 days are like spring cleaning. We remove our spiritual life anarchy to listen to God. We have to recognize the love of God for us in this time of the year. And let, let us allow this season to reshape the patterns of our life so that we can live more faithfully. It means that we must be cautious about 
the issues of interruption of fellowship with Christ due to the impatience of the soul or an ugly word or a bad thought or idea that we have focused on. It can have a conflict with our fellowship with the Son of God. And we have to do something about it. And we must purify ourselves using His sacrifice to be pure. God's Word and His Spirit can cleanse us of all our injustice if we can meet the challenge of carrying the cross. The first letter of John says if we walk in the light and have fellowship with one another, the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sins. He is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all the iniquity. Amen. God of hope, help us who struggle in our daily work. When we lose our purpose, renew our hope in you. When we bow to hatred, renew our trust in you. When we despair of bliss, renew our joy in you. When we take offense at others, renew our life in you. When we compromise our values, renew our faith in you. When we cherish regrets, renew our freedom in you. When we surrender to, des to despair, renew our hope in you. As we accept your renewing love, we offer our prayers to you. You may add your own thanksgivings and prayers at this time. We pray especially for all those commended to parish prayer lists around our diocese. Hold us and all people in your loving care, and may we be hope for others. Let us now pray in the words our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Bow your hearts before the Lord. Look mercifully on this your family, almighty God that by your great goodness they may be governed and preserved evermore through Christ our Lord. 
Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Yes, yeah.